Suge Knight is back and he is not holding back on his podcast that he is recording from prison and he is brutally exposing and going in on the elites that control P. Diddy. Hey guys, it's Marag Morali. Hopefully you guys are all doing well today. Back again with another video. If you have not subscribed, click that button. It is daily and consistent content. Click that button. I would appreciate it. Comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up and please do subscribe. I would appreciate it. Now, let's get into this video. There's a lot to discuss. Suge Knight came out with a podcast that is going viral right now as we speak. And in this, he went in on loads of people who worked against him secretly and lied to his face. These people, of course, have worked with P. Diddy, so I'm not really surprised. We know Shug and Diddy never really got along anyways, but the individual that he is referring to is Jimmy Iovine. Jimmy Iovine, he has renamed as Jimmy Livine in this podcast, so I knew he wasn't gonna hold back. Jimmy Iovine obviously was somebody who had worked and was had a very high position at Interscope, basically on the same level as like David Geffen, Clive Davis, all of these people who are above PDD and you know have basically birthed PDD, especially Clive, created the monster that he is, literally the words of Jaguar Wright. Now in this interview, he does go on for quite a while, but you know, he let's just get into what he basically says in five minutes. You know, I'm gonna give it to you quite quickly. But he claims that Jimmy from Interscope took Suge's catalog and distributed it without his permission. His archives, albums, they took all the drum beats and they gave it to Dre to build other songs around it without Suge's permission. Drum beats were properly were property of death row, Suge says. Regardless of what people think, they took them all without his permission. But get this, Jimmy and Diddy Cohen said that Tupac's mother came in and said, I want all of Tupac's stuff and took all of the masters. Tupac's mother visited Suge in prison and Interscope told her that Suge killed Tupac to turn Suge against them. She was in tears and it's a complete lie that he claims. I also do believe that I don't think Suge was behind Tupac's murder. I just, I don't see it corroborating in that way. If he feels that Interscope and Jimmy Iovine played him very dirty. Jimmy was persistent in asking Suge to use the name Chronic for Dr. Dre's album and he'll give Suge one dollar per sale. However, Suge completely denied this. He did not want anything like this. He didn't want the name to be used. They continued and agreed to not use the name Chronic. However, without asking Suge's permission, they used Suge's logo. And you know, you can't say, okay, I'm not gonna use your name, but I'm still gonna use your logo. Because if you're still using the logo, you're still technically using the brand, the name, the likeness, the affiliation, all of it. They did this all behind Suge's back. It's obviously pissed him off a lot because without, again, without his permission, they sold and made a lot of money. Snoop, for another example, wanted 800,000 for one music video called Midnight Love. Suge wasn't sure about this. He was like, why am I gonna give you 800,000 for one music video? Why don't you turn this into an EP, create three to four more songs, we can create it as a package deal. Obviously that did not take place. Jimmy then came and said that he would fund the you know $800,000 music video for Snoop. However, he didn't actually fund it. He lied to Snoop and said that he would, and he sent a secret invoice to Suge to obviously pay for that music video. Jimmy lied again, saying he paid for it, but he didn't. This re repeated when Dre obviously needed a in-house studio for a million dollars. Suge was like, this is a bad idea. Why are you gonna have random artists up in your house? But of course the studio was made. Jimmy said that he would make it, but he lied again. And Jimmy wasn't the one who paid for it. it all the invoices went back to Suge. So this is where Snoop and Dre are extremely thankful to Jimmy Iovine. And Suge also noticed that Jimmy was stealing these artists behind his back. Overall, owing Suge four to five million. Suge also calls out Denzel Washington and tells him that, you know, when it comes to, he told Antoine, sorry, Suge also calls out Denzel Washington because Denzel told Antoine Foucault to use the Death Row documentary and don't put Suge in it in any capacity. And that pissed off Suge a lot. He's going after Jimmy for his bread and he's gonna call lawyers as soon as he ends the podcast, he said. And he also wants the settlement judgment money back in terms of Snoop buying Death Row. So, you know, Jimmy Iovine was somebody himself who also is facing lawsuits. It's just P. Diddy. And I think a lot of people have forgotten about these people behind the scenes who, you know, are the elites. He's also facing an essay lawsuit. I haven't seen or heard any update. Jimmy has reacted to it and has said that he's absolutely baffled by what this lawsuit is. So, you know, Jimmy Iovine, Clive Davis, you know, all of these individuals, these people are the ones who either own 
these records, Interscope or etc., or the elites or David Geffen, they control a lot more behind the scenes. And they are the ones that are basically, you know, controlling basically the puppet handlers is how I really see it. The invisible handlers, you don't really see them much in the papers, at, you know, here and there, you barely do. So for the fact that Suge has called out Jimmy Iovine is a big statement. Hence why the podcast is doing traction and a lot of people are discussing it and talking about it because these are the people who are the elite handlers of Diddy. And when I look at these allegations of Diddy, you know, and this um, elite trafficking stuff that he's doing, it's passing through these circles above him, I believe. That's, you know, why all these parties are being done and these freak offs are being done and also why the men in these freak offs are made to wear masks. They want their identities completely hidden. So for Jimmy Iovine to face a lawsuit, I find it interesting how that's gone completely under the radar and nobody's really thought about it or talk about it. And the fact that he is a crook and that, you know, allegedly and the fact that he was stealing money behind Suge's back, giving it to other artists that actually weren't his. And then of course, stealing catalogs and X, Y, Z and lying to Tupac's mother saying that Suge was the one that had killed Tupac. So. Insane podcast, absolutely wild. Obviously putting him on that list of people. He does call out Snoop as well constantly. And of course, Snoop buying Death Row is gonna be a big punch to Sugar because they're not on great terms. So it's a lot of information in this podcast. Um, do check it out, do subscribe to them, do listen to it. Whether we like Sugar or not as a person is a different conversation. Like we know this man's not perfect by far, hence why the man's in prison. Um, but at the same time, I think that when what he, what, what he is saying in this podcast is interesting. And I think that I, I don't, like he's got nothing to lose. The man's in prison. I don't see why he would lie. He's gonna be in prison for a very long time. And if he fulfills his entire sentence, Shiv will come out of prison when he's 81. So this, it's just interesting. It paints a much bigger picture of the people above Diddy and how they would move, how Clive would move, how Iveen would move allegedly and how they would steal X, Y, Z and you know, fight for themselves only. And how, you know, they created the monster that is P. Diddy today. Now granted, P. Diddy was a monster prior to Clive Davis. We've all seen the lawsuits that date back to the 1980s and 1990s. So I'm not saying that Clive is directly responsible for P. Diddy. P. Diddy is responsible for himself, point blank, period. However, Clive Davis is definitely responsible for creating a monster and garnering him with so many connections, wealth and etc. And of course, Clive knows Jimmy. They all know each other. David Geffen is another huge person. These are all elites that are above, that are extremely wealthy billionaires that are living perfect lives up until the 80s and 90s. And now people are questioning X, Y, Z about them. But it's interesting because they are the ones who I believe are sacrificing these rappers below hand because they're moving way too much. I feel like Diddy was just doing way too much. He has a big ego. He wants the fame and etc. He was moving mad and reckless. And therefore the elites above him were like, you gotta go because you're doing way too much and you're gonna put us in a position that we don't need to be in. Therefore, you know, I believe Cassie's lawyers perhaps have an upper hand, allegedly, I don't know. Because I also feel like Cassie getting these lawyers to help her, Douglas Wigdor and etc. Granted, he has a great track record. I did a video about him yesterday, please check that out. But at the same time, Clive, Jimmy, what if they all give an upper hand in this? What if they all, you know, were like, this is the perfect way for an execution to get rid of Diddy. And that's definitely happening. Diddy cannot come back from this. Way too much damage has been done. His reputation has been finished. His legacy has crumbled in a matter of weeks. This man cannot come back in any capacity. I don't see him coming back in any capacity um, at all. And this is only the fourth lawsuit, guys. There's gonna be a plethora of more lawsuits coming out about Diddy, absolutely. Plenty of people have said it in their boardroom meetings and publicly have spoken about it. We are we have just begun when it comes to this man. Now, my only question is, it's not about Diddy going down because we know he's going down. My question is now is who is going down with him? Who is going down with P. Diddy? I'm genuinely confused, but I would like to know why because when it comes to these parties or whatever the, whatever the, whatever the F Diddy was doing, he was not doing it alone. And I'll leave it at that. That man was not doing all of that alone. Absolutely no way. I just wanna know who else is going down. Subscribe to the channel, click that button guys, it is daily and consistent content. I would really appreciate it if you click that button and subscribe, it's 24 seven fresh content on this channel every single day. Click that button and subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, comment down below, send a super thanks if you guys wish to, there's a dollar sign there and I'll catch you guys soon for another video.